As Allison said earlier, everybody, it's Halloween, and that means、uh, I have to change at least five times <laughs> this evening. So here is one of them, right? And it just means that this next item means our prices are going to be heavenly. heavenly, heavenly, heavenly. It's one of my favorites. It goes back to our colonial era. It's that beautiful colonial half dollar. Look at them, everybody! Special coins. If you recall at this time in history, the U.S. Mint opened their doors in 1793. The first coins off of the presses were the half cent copper and the large cent copper. And then we had a couple of small silver coins. Remember the story of George Washington melting his silverware, etc. And then you had a dollar, our largest coin. But it only lasted till 1804, and then it ended and didn't come back until the 1840s. What happened in the meantime? Well, this is what happened. This is our largest coin in circulation at our colonial founding. So the day range for these particular half dollars was 1807 through 1836, and what's truly unique about this series is they actually had edge lettering. So along the edge of the coins, they had either the denomination, which was 50 cents. They may say half dollar, half a dollar. There's a few different variations of the edge lettering on these particular half dollars. The thing is, though, people were shaving off the edges of the coins to melt them for for the silver. Because these are silver, so they quickly, after this series, took that off,、uh, that element of the design off, and going forward, they did not have. But that is what is cool about these particular coins. And again, from this particular series, we go into the Seated Liberty series, right? We had a half dime, dime, twenty cent piece, quarter, half dollar, dollar. So we go in the full swing, but we're talking about the 1840s. So when we're talking about President Jefferson, President Quincy Adams, our early founding fathers. These were the coins, the largest coins in circulation at that time. But let's talk value for a minute. Look at the price. We got an authentic, beautiful, hand-selected, circulated specimen, and our price tonight is just one twenty-nine ninety-five. We did. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say I saw one competitor out there at two hundred and twenty-seven dollars for this same. Coin in and, a, a and, I, I, and I saw that in, in、nice. the sheets they gave us, and that coin did not look anything、exactly. like the homogeneous look and feel ours do. The other is just look at the last decade-ish for for coins. The coin of the realm, the half dollar of the realm today, is that beautiful Kennedy half dollar. And since 1992, they've been making a silver version, 0.900 fine silver version, right? In 2012, the world shook. When for the first time ever we were under four hundred thousand silver proof sets, and the half dollar was the coin in that set, and today you can't touch that half dollar, that coin that's barely ten years old, for under two hundred and fifty bucks. Today you can get two of these colonial era, true Americana, rarer than rare. For one twenty nine ninety five, literally made in the eighteen hundreds. Now the average minted a vintage figure for these is about two million per year. Just as a comparison, Steve was just referencing the Kennedy half. The first Kennedy half, nineteen sixty four, the ninety percent silver. They made about、uh, just under a half a billion. Coins that year. These this series averaged about two million per year. So you have an incredibly low mintage. You have a ninety percent silver, one twenty nine ninety five. Competitions two hundred and twenty five to two hundred, almost two hundred and thirty dollars. Join us. This is history in your hands. It is. We talk about what coin did George Washington throw across the Potomac? Well, if it was a U.S. coin, most likely if it was a large one, it had to be that colonial half dollar, what they call the bust half dollar. Again, all of our coins are 1807 to 1836, as you referenced earlier, Allison. But the best part about it tonight is, if you want to buy more than one, I can probably do five, six, seven different years. They only had one coin per year. They were only Philadelphia issues, but we can get you up to five, six, seven different. So, if you want to put together a series. Of beautiful, affordable coins. This is one of them. It's surprising how affordable a lot of these older coins are. But the other side of this is true. They're going to be hard to find. We kick out about 80% of all the coins we get in. 
They're overly worn around the edges. The obverse and reverse don't match in color. There's a big scratch somewhere that's obvious. Doesn't mean it's not a beautiful coin, but it's not going to meet the criteria we have. When we ship it, we want it to get to you, and we want you to keep it, which means we better do our job properly, which means we are very selective. And even with that, we're still, as you referenced earlier, almost $100 less than that of our competition. 905-1214, that is the item number. Join us online via the web. That's avccoins.com. All you have to do is enter that item number into the search bar, and you'll come right to here. Up to five, up to seven different. So if you join us with two, you're going to get two different dates. We have five to seven different dates. Think about it. It's the year 2023. The youngest coin in this series is 187 years old. Yeah, we're talking about almost 200, way older than I am, in reference to the flow of how this works. The other thing is just looking at this relative value, whether it's the Kennedys, the Walkers, even the Barbers. How few of these have you seen? And then look at the gaps in history. What happened in the 1860s? We had our Civil War, right? And whether it was copper, whether it was silver, whether it was gold, both the North and the South were melting everything they could get their hands on to help fulfill their own respective efforts, right? So any earlier issue U.S. coin, and these were all Philadelphia struck, by the way, as I referenced earlier, is like needles in a haystack. We were going to, if you recall, Allison, about four or five months ago, let's bring out a specific, a specific date. Let's bring out the 1835. Let's bring out the 1832. Right? Let's bring that coin out. We're going to accumulate. After six months of accumulating and getting four or five coins that fit the criteria, we changed our opinion. We said, hey, we're going to bring it out like we normally do. This is a type coin, but we can offer a great variety for those of you that love the hunt, but we're going to do all the hard labor for you. Everybody, we got to put about a one-minute clock up, not about how about a one-minute clock up. We didn't reference this earlier, and we should have. I was just told by someone that we need to remember when they put up in the bottom right-hand corner, America's Value Channel, avccoins.com, we need to follow directions and let you know the phones are very busy, and they should be. We're not talking about a Silver Eagle that's $180 that was made in January of this year. We're talking about a coin that the youngest coin is 187 years, as Allison said. The others are over 200 and are at 129.95 tonight. Early American coinage, folks. It's the capped bust half dollar tonight at 129.95. Don't be haunted by our competition's high prices. Save over $95 with us here tonight on America's Value Channel, up to seven different dates at the low price of $129.95 each. Join us via the web, avccoins.com. Bottom line is do not miss out on this one. Talk about classics in American coinage. There's no hocus pocus and there are no tricks. This is just an outright treat. One to be talking about it, but at $129.95, I hope you enjoy them because these are special coins.